report is read, I'd just like to highlight a couple of things. Um, so one, of course, is that the whole organisation is focused on the long-term plan uh, to meet the statutory requirements, so that's become a priority in terms of the work of the organisation and obviously the council as well. Oh, I have to lean right over it. Is that better? Yes. Good, thank you. Um, yeah, so the, the whole organisation has really prioritised work around the long-term plan to meet our statutory requirements um, and with a view to having um, a draft for the Council to consider in terms of directions by December um, with consultation uh, earlier in the new year. Um, just some of the other work, though, um, that's going on is particularly around how we enhance cons um, customer experience, both internally and externally. Um, and we've got a workshop on that uh, with staff um, next week, actually, to start thinking about that. But there's a number of things that are already underway. Um, so, for example, as a way of improving customer experience, the call centre, um, we're targeting on having all staff trained in really the top areas of questions that come in um, uh, and issues related, uh, uh, for example, around rates, um, rubbish, um, building issues, um, and we're well on track to do that. But also in the evening shift, um, uh, uh, the uh, call centre staff are calling back customers um, and telling them what's actually happened about their queries, for instance, around wheelie bins or their rubbish being picked up. And um, customers have been um, pleasantly surprised that that, that follow-up's happened, but actually it's been a really useful thing to make sure that things actually do happen. There's also collaborative projects between the council and other government agencies uh, have been well received. And it's particularly around sharing information um, and um, uh, uh, the, the council drop-in um, sessions um, recently held around long-term plan, district plan, flooding and consents, well received. Um, and uh, I guess an example of how we can actually continue to share information, improve our transparency um, and decision making. Um, and uh, we're working closely so that we have much more joined up communications with CERA um, uh, so that uh, uh, communities receiving, you know, uh, the same messages, the same information um, and uh, reducing the duplication uh, that's been happening. Um, I also just uh, recognise that there's a lot of contacts uh, with the council over, over our, um, uh, through our various mechanisms. So in August, um, just in terms of inquiries through either the call centre, emails, um, requests online and visits to the website, there are about 287,000 contacts. So it's a very busy place and getting that right as a front face of the organisation is going to be very important. And I'll leave the rest of the, um, uh, the paper as read but happy to take any questions. Um, Ali? Uh, yes, just page 31 at the end of August 2014, etc. Talking about the training of the five skill sets, and you mentioned the top issues, Carleen. Mm -hmm. um, to what end, what level of uh, expertise and advice can be delivered? What does it mean for the customer? Because those issues that you, the rates in the uh, building, for example, I would imagine there would be a lot of very specific questions. Um, so how are they, are they trained? Uh, so largely they're trained around the, um, the high number of questions that come in, so the common questions, frequently asked questions. Some of it's about um, how to access um, uh, specific information, uh, where to go to, and some of, it's, uh, some of it is about referring on to the right people. But largely there's a range of, um, if you like, frequently asked questions and processes uh, that the call centre and um, other staff can help with directly. Yanni? Um, just on page 39, I see that revised network guidelines for SCIRT program have been adopted by the three funders uh, and a revised budget's coming back on November 2014. Um, one question, um, two questions on that. One is, what is the environmental impact of those changes to the standards? Um, and the second is, uh, the review that's happening by the 1st of December, is a report coming to Council around the terms of reference, the scope, and who gets appointed, and what process is underway to ensure that we as elected members have oversight of that? 
That's right. I'll just ask my colleague, uh, Dave Adamson, to respond. The um, terms of reference have, uh, have been delegated, can be signed off by the Chief Executive and by the, um, uh, by the uh, Deputy Chief Executive of CERA. Um, they have actually been gone and talked briefly that the draft, we've had a draft from them, we've actually modified it. We did talk to a short line-up yesterday about it because of the timetable of uh, councillors and that's gone back. Now, they have actually tabled, uh, I've tabled that back with Sarah about what we've thought of the changes and so I'm now waiting for a response from them. Obviously, we've got one December deadline to uh, get that going um, and so um, I have just flipped an email round to um, just a couple of the officers and I'm just waiting for a reply. Hopefully, I might get a reply by this afternoon of whether um, that's acceptable or not acceptable and uh, what changes they are proposing, if there are any changes. But they are putting it back, up, my understanding, to Treasury. Um, so there's a few players on their side that they want to actually consult with. Um, if I could just... Well, I was trying um, to understand sorry, this because I don't agree no, to... If I could just... Wait. Sorry. Um, add to that. Um, the cost year agreement says that it would be um, a, a signed off by myself and the Deputy Chief Executive of CERA, but it's our plan um, to ensure that the Council is involved in that discussion. All of the provisions of the cost year agreement, if any clarification is required, they can be signed off by the Chief Executive of the Christchurch City Council and the head of the CCDU. That is the provision in the cost share agreement, and, and which is why mm -hmm. we got two clarifications signed by the chief executive of the council, previous chief executive of the council, and by the head of CCDU. Um, certainly one of those clarifications is of considerable concern to us. It signed up to a commitment on anchor projects regardless of the insurance recoveries. So, um, so we've certainly indicated to the Chief Executive that we want to be um, looking at the terms of reference of the, um, of the review. We have had an initial discussion about that and, um, and we're very happy with the proposal that the Council's gone back to Sarah with. And then the second question, and I mean I can follow that up offline, but um, the second question was when we had the presentation from our city, um, uh, engineer um, over the impact, we, we saw some quite, um, because of the revised network guidelines, obviously a reduction in the standard and quality of repairs, and meaning that we were, there was going to be some environmental impact. What's the environmental impact assessment of those revised network guidelines? I mean, one example that came to mind was the water pressure mains, which I understand government had put a halt to being fixed last year, and we were seeing a, a high number of water leaks. So what I'm really trying to understand is, with the revised network guidelines that have been agreed or adopted, what is the environmental uh, risk and impact or effects that, for the city? Could we, could, I, I just wonder whether it'd be better to come back with a report on that, because, um, I mean, it's not something... Let's wait for the independent review and then we will know definitely what the guidelines going forward. Then we can do that work because that will give the standard and the scope of the work and we can do it. We could do, you know, a third is done being by the old standards, a third is done by the level of service standards. And so there's quite, but I think once we get a way forward, which I hope will be, well, we've got to have a report by 1 December. That should give us some clarity rather than trying to do some, because we're only 50% through the physical works at this point in time. Um, and so it could be a lot of work on something that's actually not that relevant in six months' time. Yeah. The frustration is that we keep hearing that, you know, we're, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, but then we get the presentation that shows the environmental impacts it's currently having, which just keeps getting worse and... which would appear to be getting worse and worse and worse. So, you know, I... The, the truth of the matter is, is yeah. that until the review is done, Right. We are we are stuck with the what okay. is the what's the total three point um, nine two, two point two point nine, 2 .9 million two, yeah yeah billion, <laughs> I've just thrown the extra billion in there what um, the hey? <laughs> but the other thing is that where forty three A and forty three B align is work that we're proceeding with where there are huge differences and there's economic reasons that it'd be good to do the two together we are actually looking at them so they're going through and we're choosing project by project to try and 
work our way through that would actually maximise the value to the people of Christchurch of the work that will be done in the long term. So, you know, there is a little bit of um, um, intelligence being put into what's going into that program. And as you'll see, uh, if you look at the SKIRT program, there are a number of projects on hold as we work our way through those kind of issues. But, but, There's but still a, a lot of work going on. It's absolutely imperative that this is placed in the public arena, that the public know specifically what the decisions that are made um, uh, you know, within uh, both, well, all aspects of the horizontal infrastructure project, what, what, what they mean for the council going forward, because obviously things that are not repaired to a, 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 a high quality standard now will, will have a higher cost on our operational expenditure um, you know, over the short to medium term, and, and we will be in there repairing that again at some stage in the near future. And so all of that needs to be um, calculated and it needs to be part of an overall discussion that we have to have with central government. But we won't ha be having the discussion with central government about the horizontal infrastructure until after the 1st of December so, report. So what I don't understand then, and I appreciate that the 1st of December is the critical date, that's when we'll get the information, why would you revise the network guidelines ahead of that process? And what influence will it have on that process? They because already the revised them oh, before we were elected. Well, Cost-sharing agreement, the gate is actually held by Sarah. Sarah actually says what work goes through that gate and what doesn't go through that gate. And so that's really why the, they've got that ability to revise them. And um, some we are quite happy with and others we aren't. Yeah. Network guidelines for the skirt program. That's referred to in bullet point three. What page? 39. 39. 39, paragraph three, bullet point three. Basically, what the standards, they have to have standards to design to, and basically, at the end of the day, it'll be no use designing up to standards that wouldn't go through the gate. So basically there's some, and like I say, in some parts we're doing catchments in the uh, Kashmir Hills, for example, which in actual fact the two standards pretty much align. Yep. So there no, are it's... areas that we can continue with work doing that infrastructure, no, no, I appreciate but we it. can't yeah. stop Look, the I'm machine. Gonna, I'm going to end this line of questioning, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask that we get a full report to the next council meeting, which actually sets out in some detail all of the the, the, um, the sequence of events from the outset of the program all the way through. And I mean, it, it's not a question of asking you to do a lot of extra work here because that information exists. It's just a question of pulling it together into a single report so that we can see the timeline of events when things were um, changed, because they have changed twice, and I agree with you that it is absolute, I mean, th 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 no amount of questioning is going to change the fact that at the end of the day, they have to, all of the work has to be signed off by Sarah. And so it doesn't actually get through, um, through as, t as an agreed program of work, but what you're saying is that you're protecting the interests of the network throughout this process by ensuring that where there is a vast separation between the two standards that that's being put on hold. Yeah. Well, that sounds reasonable to me. So we'll get a full report to council. So um, there was Ali, um, no, no, Tim. At, oh, sorry, was it Phil? Sorry. Thank you, Kelly. Page 44 under Accessible City. And you've got, made reference to the public workshop on the draft parking plan. I was at that, and it was an excellent workshop and well attended. And there were also was it within the context? The parking plan was within the context of an accessible city, um, and like some some great suggestions, like for example, and it wasn't new, but incorporating, for example, park and ride as part of the inner, part of the inner city parking plan. There were suggestions like that. But my really what I want to refer to is how can we ensure that in fact there's good follow up to to that um, that very good workshop. Um, just so we keep the links. I'm sure staff will be doing some work on it, but I just want to make sure that it's a priority for us um, at Council and probably for the Environmental Committee. Um, so we can feed back to you in terms of what's been done and agreed and um, how we move forward. Good. Um, 
So, Jimmy. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Two questions. The first question on page 40 regarding to the repair of the town hall. In here, the staff the information regarding to the, the operation of interest to repair a town hall was released to the market on 9 of September. My question is uh, regarding the scope, scope of the work. Is the whole building and the facility repair or is part of them? Yeah. Yes, it is. Which one? Yeah. Whole, whole building. Yeah, facility. But, uh, yeah, but but okay. but it also identifies what different stages. Oh, different stages. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it has okay. it has the right to exclude all or part. All, all, yeah, all, all or part. Okay. Um, Thank you. Uh, second question on page forty one. The uh, New South Wales neighbour in the uh, service centre, because regarding to this issue, I repeat for many many times. But I review the content, still the same as the last month. My concern is what is the time frame? Is there any the progress between this month and previous months? Uh, yes, so um, I, I will try and ensure that we update um, more fully around some of these. Um, but in terms of the Southwest Hub, um, time frame around November um, this year to December, there will be consultation with the community board, the community committee, and then coming to the council to agree um, and approve the preferred site. Okay, thank you. It's possible next month if the uh, no, okay. report put into the, the content. Thank you. Ellie. Thank you. Page 37 with regards to the skirt program. 51% uh, complete and work in the central city is approximately 71% complete. I just wondered, is anyone able to answer, if you take the central city out of the 51% that's complete, what is the delivery of the skirt projects in the rest of the city? Is anyone able to answer that? The Even an indication? Oh, not Again, sure. could, could we come back to you yeah, on sure, that? Sure. Yeah, because yep. I think that's probably I'll fair. Yeah, great, thank yeah. you. Thanks. And may, maybe we could do it ward by ward. That would be great, because I know that councillors would be very interested in that. I can bring you a plan and it shows the progress as we move east to west across the city. Um, and, and I think you may have seen that map at some stage. Um, I think I've got an updated one, so what I'll do is I'll bring it up shortly. But I'll also bring you up about the current or the latest on the work program, because scattered right through there, there's a whole pile of works on hold and design, being at top, being at... So it's not... It's not straightforward, I know, and you know the, there might be work happening on it. But is the progress shown as a percentage of the work to be completed? Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think I think it's a reasonable question if if it can be easily put together, and I'm I'm sure that the skirt people could could show that because. Um, I just remember after the earthquake, you know, the um, Orion used to report, you know, about enthusiastically about how much of the city it had on power, and it would go, you know, we've got 60% on power, and we're 70% on power, and we're 80% on power. And I remember saying to Roger Sutton, who was the head of Orion at the time, you know, you know, you, people in the east think you you don't know about them because they're eighty percent without power, and um, it's better to. And so he start he changed the way he communicated. He said, you know, we're eighty percent on power, but we're twenty thousand houses still without power, and and tomorrow we're going to get another four thousand of them on the power. You know, so people started to see what was happening and felt that they were included in the in the reporting. Glenn. Thank you. If I could mention two quick things. The previous council did used to receive skirt reports by ward that came through the environmental committee, I and community board. The, the number uh, number two, both Carleen and the CDC report indicate roads are 27% complete. Yeah. So if we could have, please, some explicit kind of status update on the roads and I think Bill would pick us as happy for any meat, especially those eastern areas. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah. People are really starting to get pretty impatient, so yeah, uh, it's been four years. Just, just on that, roads will always be the last because you will always do the infrastructure underneath you. I'm sorry, that just has to happen, otherwise we'll be, you know, the last thing we want to say is 
put a new road down and then we dig it up the week after. That doesn't look... I think yeah. people would, though, be grateful for, you know, holes to be temporarily filled, you know, because there's nothing worse than going down a road and then just bang, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you know that... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's when you forget that it's there and you do it for the second time that you actually can actually blame yourself for doing it. David. Um, would the report on, on um, roading give some indication as to the timing of the um, underground infrastructure repair, when it's due and... and uh, so that's, I mean, I think <clears throat> giving, giving some of the eastern suburbs and surely Papua Nui Ward as well uh, an, an indication that, yes, their road is, is pretty rubbishy still, but the in underground infrastructure needs, still needs to be repaired, and this is scheduled for a date. I of the works yeah. together after the independent review, we get agree between us and the Crown because basically if there's an optimisation process, the roads are going to be the, maybe the, uh, the Cinderella of the services that get left. We've still got a whole pile of issues to resolve around Red Zone, which affects a lot of the roads out uh, Eastern Christchurch. And uh, again, we've got a meeting with Sarah at the middle of October. Um, we want to come up with you at one of the workshops just to confirm uh, the infrastructure we need where we're thinking about um, uh, stop banks. We've still got 60 or 70 houses within the red zone, I think some occupied, some not. So there are a few issues that would be very, very difficult for us to put a program around roading around the worst affected areas until we do that. But we are intending to get that at a briefing to you as soon as we possibly can. I think the work's been done. Um, I think you're, you've seen it anyway, or most of it. And I think there's a good agreement about 95% of it. It's, it's principally around roading networks um, and potentially uh, stop bank positions that we mm. need to talk to you about. Yeah. All right. Just on that, um, on page 38, the optimisation group. I know we've had a workshop over and we got presented with a number of different ranges of work, but like we've never, I've never seen back what the final version of that optimisation was. And is that coming back to council, or is that going to the independent review, or is what's the kind of sign-off mechanism for that? Basically, part of that is what we can get through the gateway, so we can continue rebuilding Christchurch. As I've said, we're approximately 50% of the way through that infrastructure. I believe again, what the first part of the independent review it says, what is the scope of the work, right. and that is the first question we're asking. Second question is what is the price of the scope of the work to actually meet the obligations uh, as set out on the cost share agreement. I think, I think of those two things, and then we will get a final group now. And maybe the, uh, the uh, design standards will change because the gate will be, will be open. I think it would be really useful for us to get the existing current optimisation, because I know on that chart we saw there were things like, you know, the road going out to Sumner, there were things like bridges, and there were different choices that were made on each one. I just think it would be good for us to understand at the moment what is the current schedule of works in terms of that optimisation. Yeah. That would be I helpful to be able to well, talk to our community yeah. about we'll come what's back happening. There's an independent briefing on, on yeah. HI and... Uh... Yep. Um, Jamie. No, I'm, I'm happy to receive the report. Oh, you'll, you'll move that? Yep. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Ali can second it. Pauline? Thinking on those... Um, those skirt briefings that go around the community boards, I was wondering if we could just check up on that programme because I don't recall them no, don't having either. been lately, have no, you? Okay. And they were quite comprehensive reports, ward by ward, mm. so I wonder if we could just, just see make where sure that. Yeah, it sounds like the skirt um, briefings have um, slowed up lately with community boards, so it might be worthwhile raising that with them. Yeah. Come on a regular basis. Yeah. And just, just on that from a comms perspective, it's great getting the PDFs of the work start work notices and things. Mm. They are really hard to use on social media. 
Um, and so what I've asked is that we be sent a URL that we can then use through either Twitter or Facebook because yep. we can post those. And I think the PDFs come out before sometimes they're actually put onto a website. So it would be great if we could align that so that we're actually getting them as URLs that we can post, yeah. please. I think there's a lot more that we could be doing better in the social media space um, in terms of advising people. So no, that, that's a that's very timely reminder. Um, I, I just think that with this whole um, question of the horizontal infrastructure, it's obviously raised a number of issues, but I, I think that we, we will get a complete report together and bring it to council so that people have got an absolute line of sight. Because I don't think people need to worry that we have signed off on, like, this is, we're, we're agreed that this is the position um, going forward. We've agreed that this is what's going to be acceptable within the budget, within the time frame, so that skirt doesn't stop working but while we have the independent review. So that's all it is. It's, it's really a deferment um, uh, while we um, undertake that, that detailed analysis. So I'll, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you. Have we got a resolution?